We did. We had a great Father's Day, a wonderful three testimonies. Uh, yeah. If you didn't see it, you know, go online. See, it. I had a phone call from Wilmington. Somebody called from Wilmington saying how that touched their heart and touched their life and had to call in and just say, please tell those gentlemen, thank you for those stories. Thank you because it touched their lives. And uh, that, that's pretty awesome. You know, they say if you see a mouse, there's a hundred you didn't see. Maybe that one phone call, there's a hundred phone calls we didn't get, you know. So maybe God touched a lot of hearts through that. We're grateful for what they did. But today we're getting back to what we've been speaking about. Uh, you know, I've told the story of E. Stanley Jones saying there was somebody who was in his life that he says his spiritual life just was powerful to him, penetrated his life. And, and I, I would have loved to have known E. Stanley Jones. I would have loved to spend time with him. But he said, this man affected my life. And uh, so E. Stanley asked him, really, what is it? What, what is one of the things that just makes this, your life so powerful? And he said, well, every week I try to sit with God, just be in a room by myself, and I ask five questions, and I, and I try to be honest. We've gone over three of them already. This is what they are. Am I truthful? The first question. Am I honest? Am I pure? And we've talked about those. And those are truly penetrating scriptures when you, or, or, or questions when you think about the scriptures that match up with those ideas about who God is, that he is truth. And, you know, to be honest, to be pure. He is pure. Today we're looking at the fourth one. Am I loving or easily offended? Of course, the fifth is, am I consecrated to God's higher purposes or am I self-centered or is it all about me? And when I looked at this subject of am I loving or easily offended, it was just too much, too, too much to talk about in the time that we have. So we're just going to look at one part of it, the offense. Today we're looking at the offense. Because how many of you know, when you get offended, everything shuts down. When you get offended with somebody, it's just like everything's stalled for a while until you fix that, until you get that thing right. Offense is a problem. Aren't you glad God wasn't offended with you? Look, look what we've done against him. I mean, Jesus had to go to the cross for all of us. Uh, you know, you may say, well, I wasn't that bad. Well, your bad was awful. <laughs> Whatever, you, your little bit of bad was awful. So it doesn't matter if you got a lot of, bit of, <laughs> a lot of bad or, or a little. This is last service, isn't it? <laughs> I can't even talk right now. The bad is bad. And Christ had to go to the cross for that. And he wasn't offended. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But what, what is it with us? He, he, he talks about how we should operate here. You know, forgive one another as Christ forgave you. See, offense is tied to bitterness, unforgiveness. And, and, and when the disciples said, teach us how to pray, what did he say? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And they came down and, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others their trespasses. To be connected with God is to not let offense live in you. To be, able to, to be able to do what God did. He loved the unlovable. And if you hold uh, the offense, if you hold unforgiveness, I, I've watched some people get so bitter while they thought they were keeping anger or unforgiveness that somehow that, this other person was deserving of it. And my dear, sometimes those people, they've gone on with their life. They don't know you're, you're still offended. They, they don't even know sometimes what you're talking about. Now, see, if we would listen to God, that door would be open for us to let God continue to build up in us. But, but we get outside of how he wants us to be. What, what does the Bible say to do with your enemies? Love them? Are you kidding me? What, what kind of talk is that? They're my enemy for crying out loud. Yet the kingdom says love them. You don't know what they did. I, I, I want to hate them forever. And you're canceling out the kingdom of your own life to do that. We're to give our enemies that cool cup of water, right? 
to do that. What about if somebody, anybody like being used? Anybody like that? Well, how about this one? Despitefully used. That's what the Bible says. What are we supposed to do with those people who despitefully use us? I don't even know how bad that is, but that sounds pretty bad. What are we supposed to do with them? You pray for them. Pray for those who despitefully use you. That sounds pretty bad. Yet the kingdom prays for them. Why is that? Can you imagine what it was for human beings to take the hands and feet of the Son of God, of our Lord, and drive nails into His hands and feet? What's the father's response to them doing that to the only perfect one? But Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Because if you gave them what they deserve right now, they're dead. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Pray, love your, your enemies. That's what he did. That's God's stuff. But if I'm offended, I can't do it. Now, if I'm going to love you, love the body of Christ, or even love the world like I'm supposed to, how am I going to do that? Some of us, we don't, you know, we don't, we've got a bitterness for a long time. We, we, maybe we don't know how to get rid of it. How am I going to live and do what God tells me to do? i got to get closer to Him. For me to live like God, i got to be with God. I, I, I'm sorry, folks, religious does, doesn't take care of it. I don't find out enough about God being religious. I got to be with him. I got to, he's got to be in me. And if I am offended at God, then how can I be with God? How can I be like God when I'm too busy being offended with God? So to figure out how to love and not be offended at you correctly, I got to get to where I'm not offended by God. How many know people have a trouble with authority? We all know somebody who has trouble with authority. Maybe you're going, it's me. I got trouble with authority. Who's the highest authority? God. If you're too busy being offended with God, you're missing out on the blessing of God. The kingdom isn't flowing through you like it should if you're too busy being offended with God. Because God will tell you something and and you're either going to go with him or you're not. It's really going to either offend you or you're going to go with it. You're either going to be with the authority or you're going to be against the authority. And you got to figure that out with God first. When he speaks, that should be something valuable in your life. What about when he identifies something that's wrong in your life? He, he points it out. Well, if you don't like authority, you might keep it. The Spirit may talk to you today and you just keep right on going because... You're not going to let that authority change your life. Come on, church. He may speak to how you do life. He may speak to how you think. And just, it's got to be corrected. And, but if you get offended, you won't correct it. Uh, right, out, right out here, had a sister in the Lord out there. She was just, just happy. <laughs> and here's what she was happy about. She said, I, I went to multiple places multiple churches, and I could not find anybody who really loved me because she was talking about that she was bound up in homosexuality. And she said, I couldn't find anybody to deal with my issue. They wanted me to feel comfortable. They wanted me to feel whatever, but they never talked about what God said about my issue. She said, but I've come here and I love this place because you talk about my issue. I'm just I'm just out there and she's just just happy because why? She found somewhere where a preacher would actually say homosexuality is not God's plan for your life. Well, that ought to be obvious. It's in the word. But you see, even in churches, pastors are being offended now by that word that they won't even speak it with boldness or at all. 
And they want people to feel more comfortable than the fact that they might be offended if I stand up for the word of God. Don't you understand? You actually love people when you tell them what the word of God says. If, if you run away from it and if you're ashamed of it, or if you go with, well, the world doesn't like it anymore, so I'm not going to speak about it. And we've got so many people in it now and so many people feeling comfortable and so many, we don't want to rock the boat. How many of you know Jesus will rock your boat? <laughs> I, I don't know what it is for you to walk with Jesus, but I'm telling you, if I'm in the wrong place, he does not make me feel comfortable. He does not. Jesus doesn't have a problem with offending you. He will tell you the truth. His whole life is about the truth of the gospel. And she celebrated that somebody told her and understood her battle. See, every single one of us has a battle. Don't, don't look at, 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 at just like sexual things. because Maybe we all have a lot of sexual things that we deal with. Maybe it's not that, but, it, but it's all in these categories. Like I said, your awfulness is awful, however big it is. But what about this one? You know, you know, Pastor, yeah, you talk about that. You talk about those, that homosexual or that trans. You, you put it out there. Well, what about this one? How about paying your taxes? <laughs> or, oh, watch out, Pastor. I'm going to start getting offended now. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not always honest on my taxes. Sadly, you would not believe how many Christians don't do their taxes right. Sadly, how many Christians are offended at the word of God because they won't obey it when it comes to taxes. You know, I wrote a song about it. Well, I put it on the pages about my wages. It's tax time, you see. But I don't think I owe my Uncle Sam. I, I think Uncle Sam owes me. <laughs> so I put it on the lines, a few white lies. But my spirit put up a fight. He said, you know, a little bit of wrong is a long ways from right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> How many know Jesus paid taxes? Jesus paid taxes. When they were at Capernaum, the man came to Peter and says, does your master pay taxes? Why do you say pay taxes? Because I've told you, I believe he had an office there. I believe he had a house. And the, the, the temple tax was there. And he wanted to know, does the master of the house pay taxes? So Peter had to go into the house to ask Jesus about taxes. And he said, Jesus told him why he really didn't have to pay taxes. Because the temple tax was about the house of God, and he was God. I'm paraphrasing, but what he said was, the Son of God's here, and he don't have to pay taxes in the Father's house. He said, but, so that everything's in order, go fishing, and you'll catch a fish, there'll be a coin in its mouth, give it to him, because we're going to pay our tax. Jesus paid taxes. What about you? Are you offended at that word? Go talk about those sexual sins, pastor. But don't tell me about taxes. Don't tell me about something else. Don't tell me about my darkness. Well, I'm telling you, it's all. We get offended at all of it if we're not going to do it. I had, I had a, a Christian brother. Should have, should have been my elder brother in the church. Should have been the one teaching me how to live for God. He should have been an example for me. The older should be an example for the younger. Amen. The older should know what to do. The older should be teaching the younger. And, and this older brother in the Lord came into my hardware store and went into our, our, our pork section because we, we raised our pigs and we got them slaughtered and we sold the, the meat. So we had pork and eggs in there and he loaded up, must have been going to have a nice picnic or barbecue, loaded up with pork and eggs and, and all that. And, and, and we got it all together. He said, charge it to the company. I said, okay. And I'm writing the ticket out, and he says, can you put that down as hardware? That's probably why I said, well, I put it on the pages. About... <laughs> can you put that down as hardware? This is my brother who should be teaching me how to live. But instead, the younger brother taught him how to live. I said, no way. I said, you're not going to go eat hardware. 
this is pork and eggs, and that's what I'm putting it down to. You want me to continue this ticket? All right. He may have been offended with me, but only one of us stood up for the word that day. Amen. Only one of us stood up for the Lord that day. And see, some of us, we just go right along with it. All right, you, you're going to do it wrong. I'll do it wrong with you. How much evil is going on in our world? Because we all just go along with each other. I don't want to offend anybody. So you want to be that way, you know? How about we actually talk about the, the life and the truth of God when we come into the house? How about we actually say it that way? And if somebody gets offended, then they get offended. Because how are we going to move on with God if, if, if we're going to stay offended? Or if the pastor won't speak the truth of the word of God when he's here? This is our moment. This is our time. If you didn't come here for that, you know, when people come and say, oh, you stepped on my toes today, Pastor. I said, well, the Holy Spirit steps on mine every day, every day. <laughs> every day I got to grow. Every day I, I'm challenged. Every day the world says, keep it going. The Holy Spirit says, no, you're not. Why do, why do you think God is comfortable for you? He wants to bring peace in your life, but we get it by obedience to the word of God, not by doing something else. <laughs> so anyway, so to continue on. <laughs> We're running out of time. I want to look at the offense we have to the things of God because that will deal with the offense that I'll hang on to somebody else. We want to learn how to be loving. Let's deal with the offense that causes us to be unloving. So look at this, Matthew, or Proverbs 18, verse 19. A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city, and contentions are like the bars of a castle. Once somebody gets offended, it's hard to get anything changed after that. Because people have to humble. They have to repent. They have to change. Once offense is in there, it's just problematic for everybody. Get close to God. You will, you will subdue and start to change the fact that you'll get a, you don't have to be offended at all. You can deal with people who hurt you. You can deal with people. You know, If Jesus had opportunity to be offended at somebody, that whole time of the crucifixion, he could have been offended. Never did. Never did. He prayed and loved people all the way through all that darkness. You can learn how to do that too if you're close to God. Say amen or oh me. Matthew chapter 11, verse 1. Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ. So what did John hear in prison? He heard the works of the Messiah. Not just the Messiah, but the major Messiah. You see, Israel had, had developed, and you, you don't hear much of this, but if you, if you look it up, you can follow it, and you can see that they had a teaching that developed major Messiah, minor Messiah. That's a fact. Major Messiah was this conquering king who, would, who had the kingdom that would go on forever. They loved that when they were looking for major Messiah. They wanted major Messiah there. He was the one who was going to do all these incredible things. But then they had Isaiah 53. They had Psalms 22. They had this one they called the suffering servant, one who was somehow going to die and somehow save the people from what they'd done wrong. Somehow in death, he was going to save the nation. They didn't know what to do with that one. Because this, this conquering king is not going to die. He's going to change everything. He's going to kick the Romans out. We're looking for the major Messiah. Okay, there's a minor dude, but don't know much about him. Remember, when John is with his cousin, when John is there, he says, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That was minor Messiah. That was Isaiah 53. That was Psalms 22. So he knew Jesus was going to be like him. He was going to stand up for what was right. People were going to be offended and somehow they were going to end up killing him and somehow that would save the nation. What he didn't know was major Messiah who was doing, could do all these incredible miracles. He'd never seen his cousin do that and he did not know that he was both. You don't have to believe that. I believe it. So when John heard about that he was doing works of, of the major Messiah. When John heard he was doing incredible miracles, he hadn't seen that before. So look what happens. He sent two of his disciples and said to him, so when they came, this is what he said to Jesus, are you the coming one? Well, he already said he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, but 
That's the minor Messiah. Are you the major one also? The teaching was not in Israel that they were both the same person. Or do we look for another? Because I've heard that you're doing major Messiah miracles. Now, in Luke, it says when these two disciples came to Jesus, he was in the midst of doing those very miracles. And look what Jesus says here. And Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things which you hear and see, which you guys hear right now. You see it. You've heard what they've said I've done, and you're seeing what I'm doing. I'm doing major miracles right now. So go and tell him what you've heard and what you see. Keep going. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached. John did not see that coming. And now that he's heard that's happening, he wants to know, are you also the major Messiah? And then he adds this to, for his cousin. He said, an old cousin. Blessed is he who's not offended because of me. You know, sometimes your cousins, your brothers don't give you all the credit you should have. Because they grew up with you. And they just can't imagine that God would do more with you than what they understood. And so Jesus said, yeah, John, I am the major Messiah also. And don't be offended because it's me. And that's the word that John got back. See, I've, I've read it and I've seen where they say he started to doubt. He started to doubt what? This is the dude that, that left family to go out and live in the wilderness, to put on animal skins, to eat honey and locusts, who didn't mind offending people with his word to repent, who didn't mind telling Herod, you're out of order, Herod, who didn't mind being locked up, who then the Bible says that Herod would go down and talk with him, and literally Herod began to make decisions in government that were now being influenced by his holy man in the basement. Don't don't tell me he didn't believe in Christ. What did Jesus say to him? John, here's some more information. I am the major Messiah, and don't be offended because it's me. When you find out that Christ is Lord of everything, when, when you find out, when you hear the word that Jesus is in charge and he ought to be Lord and you ought to respond and answer and live like he tells you to live, many of us get offended and we walk out. Or you walk out of this place, you don't change your life because you don't want him as Lord. You don't want him to have his position. You don't want his, his reign and rule in your life. And he said, now that you know it, don't be offended because it's me. And we know about that offense because keep on going. Go to the next scripture. This is Matthew chapter 13, 53. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he then departed from there. And when he had come to his own country... So this is where he grew up. This is Nazareth. This is the people that know him. When he came to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were what? Astonished at what he said. I've had people come to me and say, I didn't think God was going to do something like this with you. You, you, I I still got people today that think I'm still wet behind the ears because they saw me grow up. Don't know how to understand what God's doing with me. They were astonished at what he said. And they go, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? He was living right with us. Where did he have all this? Remember when the fullness of God came on him at his baptism, it says the Holy Spirit came down and stayed on him. And now they talked about him in these terms. The fullness of the Godhead was in him bodily. And now from that point on, demons screamed when he came by. Now, the home folks said that didn't happen when he was here. The home folks were ready to be offended. The home folks said, where did he get this kind of stuff? Where where did he get this power to do miracles? Not just miracles, the mighty works of the Messiah. Keep going. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brothers, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters are... Are they not all with us? Where then did he, where then did this man get all these things? 
You know, it's like, how can you grow up in Milton and have good things happen to you? (laughs) Where did he get all this stuff? And then look what it says. So they were offended. They were offended. How many of you know, if God's doing something, don't don't say you got to figure it out. If God's doing something, don't sit there and say, well, i got to figure out how he did it or else I'm not going to accept it. God will tell you something and maybe the world's telling you something else. Which one should you agree with? What God says. So they, they were offended. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works where? There. How about that? Where they were offended, no mighty works. Very little happened there. Why? Because they're too busy being offended instead of yielding to what God's doing. How much is not happening in your house because you're too busy being offended at God at what he's telling you to do and how to live? You're too busy standing up for your sin instead of getting rid of your sin. (laughs) And while you're standing up, you talk about his grace to keep it. Oh, my dear. I get it. God loves us. I get it. God accepts us where we are, but he never leaves us there. Don't ever talk about God leaving you in your sin. He doesn't do it. He did not. He did no mighty works there because of their unbelief. Let me tell you what comes with offense. Unbelief. Once you're offended, you cannot believe the word that it is because belief will put it into action. Therefore, you're not going to put it into action because why? Because you're offended. Therefore, the mighty works of God don't happen to you. This is serious, church. Come on. This is serious. Do you want the life of God flowing or don't you? And if we're busy of being offended, we miss out on the things that God would love to do in our hearts and our lives. Matthew 15. Verse 1, then the scribes and Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus saying, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Doesn't that sound important? The tradition of the elders. It just got a ring to it, you know. Well, power, you know. The tradition of the elders. They made a movie of it. Tradition. Fiddler on the roof. And what did they do? They just... Showed why tradition didn't work for them. (laughs) Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Now, these are the Pharisees who heard all the things that Jesus was doing. Some of them saw the things and they still were offended and their hearts never believed. So they are mad that Jesus is not making his disciples follow the tradition. And what is that tradition? For they do not wash their hands. When they eat bread. Oh, my dear, that's terrible. I might, I might eat bread today without washing my hands. They do not wash their hands. Now, I know some of you moms, I always tell my kids, wash your hands before they eat. I always tell my kids. This is the tradition of the elders. They need to wash their hands before they eat bread. Do you see that in the Bible? But this is their tradition. And they're mad at Jesus and his disciples. They're offended because they don't keep that tradition. Keep going. But he answered and said to them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God? Why do you transgress the commandment of God? Because of your tradition. He said, now you made this tradition, and it's a man's tradition, and you made it, and yet you transgress the things of God, the commandments of God. By your, what, What's this commandment of God? You see, which one trumps, tradition or commandment? Commandment. For God commanded, God commanded, saying, honor your father and your mother. And then Jesus reminds them of what it says next. And who curses father or mother, let them be put to death. He reminded them that God, through the threat of death, says, obey your, honor your father and mother. Honor them. Give them honor. 
You don't know what they did to me. You don't know whatever. Blah, blah, I want to dishonor. You know, I don't obey that word. And they gave them, they gave them a tradition to not obey that word. He gave them a, 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 they gave them a tradition so they wouldn't have to obey that word. Now God says, you know, Jesus reminded them that, that God wanted to hold them accountable by the threat of death. You know, we wouldn't have to have as many prisons today if we would just do the word of God. You steal $100 from somebody, what does the Bible say to pay back? Seven times. You stole 100 pay back $700. Well, I don't want to pay back 700 That's okay. Go to the execution block. I think I'll pay back 700 <laughs> And then I'm not going to steal 700 I'm not going to steal 100 again because I don't want to pay back 700 And you hold that law up under the penalty of death. So guess what? You don't have to build a prison for that person. We can't build enough prisons in America. So we just decided to become what? Lawless. We're just not even going to apply any law. We're just going to let people steal and put them back out. That sounds like God, doesn't it? They, they, call, it as, they call it like that. They, they say it's kind of righteous or somehow holy to not hold people accountable. It's not holy at all. It's not under God at all. And Jesus reminded them that people should honor their mother and father. And if they got a means to be able to do it, they ought to do that. Rather than put it on the people or the government, they should honor. It's their mother and father. They should try to take care of them under the commandment of penalty of death. That's Jesus talking. Keep going. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God. Meaning, whatever extra I had that I could have taken care of you, I say to the elders or the high priests, uh, 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 the, uh, the Pharisees, I'm going to give it as a gift uh, to the temple or to the synagogue. I'm going to give it as a gift. And therefore, they free me from my obligation of having to take care of mom and dad. Isn't that a wonderful tradition? Let your parents starve. Make, just make sure you give your money to the church. Isn't that, isn't that something? And that was a tradition, that if you simply said, oh, my, my extra is a, is a gift to the church, is a gift to the temple, is a gift. So, so, so sorry, mom and dad, that money's not available to you. Come on, church. Then he need not honor his father or mother because he made that pledge to the temple or to the synagogue. Thus you have made the commandment of God, which is the more important one, of no effect by your tradition. So you've created something that cancels out the word of God and our society is not better for it. Anytime we make up something or some new demand and it does not match the word of God, our society is not better for it. Get that through your head. When we go against the word of God, our society is not better for it. Keep going. Hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you saying these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips? Did we not just have a worship service here? Did we not speak with our mouths praise to God? Did we not sing with these lips? But it's pointless if your heart is far from me. If you're coming in here, you praise God, but yet if the Spirit's talking to you right now, you're not willing to change. Look, look what Jesus says about that. Keep going. And in vain they worship me. Pointless. It's worthless. Doesn't matter how much you praise. If you're going to be offended at the word of God, your worship was pointless. Your heart is not close to God if you will not obey the Spirit of God. If the kingdom speaks and you say no, don't think you're blessed. Yeah, but I'm, I'm really progressive, Pastor. I'm a progressive guy. I'm, I'm part of this new group that, that, that we're okay with sexual sins. We're okay with all this stuff because, you know, we, God loves everybody. Oh, yeah, he loves everybody. And he'll tell you the truth. That's how much he loves you. He'll tell you the truth. He'll tell you the truth of your destiny. He'll tell you the truth of how you should live. 
Why? Because he loves you. And he says, if you will not discipline or correct, you don't love anybody. Don't sit there and be approving of somebody's darkness or sin and think you're loving them because you're not loving them at all. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the ideas or the commands of people, of men. When the public school comes against the, the laws of God, which one's right? When education systems want to go against the very word of God, which one's right? You know, we've got to make up our mind. We've got to decide, and we've got to help our kids to know, know the difference. Because if you don't teach them, they will. And, and they won't be pointing them to God. We've got to make sure they understand who God is. And when he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear and understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man. Your unwashed hands on a piece of bread is not what's going to defile you. He said, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. When Jesus said, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your heart that's far away from God will start to live it that way, speak it that way. Then his disciples came and said to him, do, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? The disciples hadn't learned enough about God yet to understand it's okay to offend people when it comes to the word of God. They were telling Jesus, you got to be cautious. Did you not know they were offended because you spoke this truth about the word of God? Don't be worried about that. You make sure you have the truth. Not that a leader will get offended at you for standing up for the truth. Did you not know that they were offended at this saying? Keep going. But he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. When, when at the end of the day, you're not with God, you're gone. At the end of the day, if you spend your life offended at God, don't worry about being with God. You either draw near him or you draw away, and, and your end's going to be just that. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into the ditch. I, I can tell you right now, church, everybody that's in here, if you will follow a, a party or a political party or some other kind of leader or some other group above the commandments of God, don't worry about it. You're going to fall in the ditch just like they are. You're going to face the judgment that they that your leader. If Jesus is not Lord of your life, if some political person is, then you're going to get their results. If they're in darkness and you and you walk with them, you're going into darkness too. If you say, Jesus is my Lord, Jesus is whatever, and then you do a life that's totally contrary to that, don't worry about just saying Jesus is Lord. You're going to go in the same ditch. I heard somebody, they said how wonderful a believer and how wonderful they grew up in church, and it was wonderful. And, and okay, so you hear that, and then turn right around, come up and says, I'm tired of te people telling me what to do with my body. Oh, this wonderful believer in the Lord's okay with you killing your baby. Come on, church. That's being compassionate. You know, that, that, that hand washing, so offended that you don't wash your hands. But then they'll, they'll, they'll go against the very commandments of God. You know, in California, we can't get them to vote for the life of that baby. If that, if that baby is, is, is going to be aborted, but it, the, the abortion didn't work, the baby comes out alive. We can't get people to protect that baby. They vote and say, no, kill the baby anyway. No protection for the baby. But you better not buy straw, a uh, plastic straw in California. <laughs> You'll get fined. You terrible, awful person for having plastic straws in California. But you can kill your baby all you want. We won't even protect it if it comes out alive. Do you understand the insanity of that? That's what happens when you're offended at the word of God, but you do the commandments of, of people. You are out of whack, and your family's not blessed because of it when you're out of whack. Say amen or oh me. Amen. They are blind 
leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, they will both inherit the same judgment, the same results. That's why you only get into heaven if you have a Lord. Jesus died for the whole world. It takes a Lord to get into heaven. You can go to hell with a Savior. You can't get to heaven without a Lord. You will not come in and say Savior. You will come in and say Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You want to be part of the bride? Well, Sarah called her husband Lord. You need to call your husband Lord. It's spiritual speaking, but he needs to be in charge of your life. Amen. Keep going. Matthew 24, verse 4, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So he's saying, as we progress through this, all this stuff is going to happen, because they were worried. It's, it's, has Christ come? Has that already happened? Is the kingdom? What about the kingdom? He's trying to clarify that. Keep going. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Keep going. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. As the world turns against God, they will turn against the church. And they will deliver you up for tribulation and death and prison. And you will be hated by all nations for my sake. And it's getting to a place where it's hard to find a nation that's happy about Christians. Even here, they're not so happy anymore. And in all nations, you, you'll find persecution for believers. And then many will be what? Then, yeah, when it comes down to that, when the world doesn't like us anymore, many of us are going to get offended too. Many of us who say, oh, we're here with you, but oh, my dear, if the world really starts persecuting, I'm gone. I'm going to leave. I'll, I'll be offended with you, too. I'm going to call myself the happy atheist. You know, I heard the, the guy that the, the pastor of the church fell, and that guy said he just became an atheist. He got offended at what that guy did, and then he, what happens? He turns against God? He doesn't even believe in God now? You see, that's what's going to happen here. When the world changes their tune, many of us will change ours too. And we will be offended and they will betray one another and will hate one another. And there'll be disruption within the people who say they're in the body of Christ. And then we're going to find out who the true believers are. The true believers. See, it's pretty cushy and comfortable here right now. We talk about it in, that in America, we have freedom to worship. Well, what if we didn't have it? Would you still worship? What if we didn't have it? Would you go to jail for it? Keep going. And then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, and we're starting to get to a place where it's crazy, where lawlessness abounds. And what happens when lawlessness abounds, where there's no rule of law, when, when policemen can't do their job, when people get phone calls and they just stay in there because it's not even worth going out and arresting anybody because they're just going to be put right back out on the street. What happens when that happens? People start getting out their cell phones and phone and take a picture of you getting beat up, but they don't help you. They'll all stand on the sidelines and let you get beat to a pulp, and they don't help you. And for those brave people that stand up and do help, sometimes they turn against them. <laughs> the government might put you in jail. Who knows? Come on, church. Where lawlessness is, love of many will grow cold. You want love to abound? Do the things of God. It'll be more love in, the, in our society. You want to get rid of it? Have an offense against God. Don't follow his word, and you will see people no longer care about one another. And we're at a place where a lot of people don't care about one another. And if we promote and we keep doing things that do that, it's only going to get worse. What's going to happen with you? Where are you going to be standing as we get into those type of times? You going to be offended at God or you going to stand up for God? You going to let God be in your life and be blessed because of it? Next verse. But he who endures, what? 
Till the end shall be saved. Not these who turn back. Not these who give up on God. Not, not those who get offended with the word of God. But those who hang in there, they're going to be saved. How many want to be saved? Those, those who are the saved hang in there. They don't get offended and leave. They stand up for God no matter what's going on. Make up your mind you're that kind of person. Make up your mind. That's who you are in the body of Christ. Figure it out that God's for you, not against you. And when he tells you something, you hear it, you listen, you obey, you don't get offended, you go with it. And if it takes prison, if it takes persecution, if it takes tribulation, you're still going to stand for God and not be offended at him. And those people are going to be in the bride of Christ. Those people are going to have on that robe of righteousness that says they're dressed in the righteous works of the saints. Not people who get offended at God. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. Now, all nations, it says, was hating people and persecuting, but they still got to see a witness. And who are the witnesses? The people who don't get offended with God. The people who still live it when, when the world says don't. We are the light. We are the witness. We are the voice. And then the end will come. So praise God. Hang in there. There's a promise you have that they don't have. Things are going to be good for you. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Amen. Keep going. We'll end with this. John chapter 6, verse 53. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Now here, he's speaking about spiritual things, but using the physical. And even his own disciples are scratching their heads saying, what is he talking about? Cannibalism? What is he talking about? Trying to figure it out. How many of you know, if you don't understand what God's telling you, you don't run away? Even if you don't get it. You listen to it. Even if you don't get, why is he telling me not to do that? It seems so pleasurable. Or I feel more comfortable there. Doesn't matter. If God's saying the opposite, listen to him whether you understand it or not. Our Achilles heel is always trying to understand everything. So this is what he's saying. Keep going. And he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, lives in me, and I in him. Of course, he's talking about the spirit, the spirit of who he is. As the living father sent me and I live because of the father, the father is living in him, and I'm I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing because of the father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. So the father has life through the son, and we get life through his son. Keep going. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Of course, they had the, their stories and tradition that, that uh, you know, the, Israel lived off that manna that was on the ground every day. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread, me, my life, the spirit of God will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. So here's his headquarters. This is his home place. This is where most of all those mighty miracles that showed that he was the Messiah happened. And he's saying it in the synagogue. Keep going. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying, Who can understand it? In another gospel, it says many of his disciples left him because this this word was too hard. They didn't understand it. So they stopped following Jesus. They stopped believing in Jesus as Messiah. They got offended because they didn't understand something. So many of them left. And the disciples say, oh, man, this is a hard saying. This is where Jesus turned to his 12, the closest to him, and he said, are you going to leave also? You don't understand why God's telling you that or you don't understand, you know, you, you want to do something else, but God, the Spirit's convicting you. You know God's telling you to change. You don't understand it? You still going to hang in there and do it or are you going to leave? You going to stop obeying God? You going to be offended? This is what Jesus asked the disciples. He said, are you going to leave also? Because you don't understand. Because you think it's a hard saying, are you going to leave also? And what did Peter say back? 
he said, where else are we going to get words of life? We don't understand it. We do not. I'm, I'm puzzled. I'm scratching my head right now. But I got enough smarts to know I'm only getting words of life from you. So when I don't understand it, I don't leave. I just wait till I can figure it out. I'll just wait. Because as I grow in you, I'm going to start figuring this stuff out. And that is the truth. There's so many things I didn't understand when I was younger in the Lord that I understand now. Thank God you don't run away when you don't understand something. Thank God when you don't understand, man, I got this battle and, 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 and this is going on, but yet God says it's time to get this out of my life, so I'm going to be working to get this out of my life. Just yield to what he says. The proof and the blessing is going to be in your future. The proof will be in your life. Keep going. And when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? You don't understand what I just said. You don't understand something. And so you see people right now, they're leaving. They're walking away right now. I've had times I've said something. I see people get up, walk out. All I'm doing is talk about the word of God, but it hit them in the wrong place. They get up and walk out. Sometimes they're going to the bathroom, but sometimes... (laughs) I say that so you don't assume. See, there's a brother and sister here right now. Man, I was about ready to leave. (laughs) I got to stay now. Somebody think I'm offended walking out on the preacher. Does this offend you? That you don't get it, that you don't understand. I've said it, and you're like scratching your head. And and does that make you want to say, I don't want to follow this God anymore? Does this offend you? And look what he says. What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? What if you could go see me right now ascend to my right hand position of the Father? What about my word then? That's what he's saying. There's people walking away from me right now. They're leaving right now. You want to go with them? But what if you saw me in my future position as the Son of Man ascended on high, sitting at the right hand of the Father? What are you going to say then? Do you understand what he's speaking to us right here today? He's saying, I know who I am. I am the Son of Man. I am the one who's going to sit at the right hand of the Father. I am going to judge everybody according to the Spirit who knows everything about your life. And I will judge correctly because the Father will tell me about who you are. What if you could see that right now and then put that against the word you don't understand or the commandment you're not obeying or when I tell you how you should live your sexual life and you refuse to do it? What if you could see me at the right hand now? What would you say then? You'd be trembling in your boots. He was trying to wake them up and saying, what's more important, the life of God or your comfortability? You need a preacher who's going to pat you on the back, a church that's going to welcome you in your sin, or somebody who's going to tell you, here's what God says. And then he says, when he explains that, what are you going to do when you see me there? Because these words, everything I'm telling you, it is the spirit who gives life and the flesh is nothing. You don't understand it? Let it go. Listen to what the spirit says. Ignore the things of the flesh. Yeah, but I want to have political power. That justifies why you're going to go against the will of God. It is the spirit who gives life to flesh, profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. The things I tell you, the commands I give you, the reason they are there is because they are the life of God himself. And are you going to obey it or are you going to be offended at it? The world hates me and they're going to hate you. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Keep going. But there are some of you who do not believe. You see, when you're offended and you don't want to do the, it's it's equal to disbelief. He could do no mighty works because they did not believe. Why did they not believe? Because they were offended at the word of God. 
But there are some of you who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. So it wasn't just Judas. He knew, he knew people around him that were not going to stay with him. And what did he talk about then? He talked about offense. Do you understand when you spend too much time being offended, you miss out on the kingdom of God? My brother, my sister, do not live in offense. Get rid of offense. Let God tell you what he needs to do. Listen to it, obey it, even if you don't understand it. Watch the blessings of God increase in your life. This is what it's all about. And when you understand that, you can understand what we're going to talk about next time, which is loving like God. Why don't you stand? Ooh, amen. Praise God. Yeah, there you go. I'm pretty sure most of those people aren't offended that are leaving right now. (laughs) I know the Spirit has spoken. Period. I know the Spirit has spoken. His words are life. Don't, don't, even, don't, don't even consider me. You know, people may say, oh, yeah, Pastor, you know. Well, listen, I can't do anything without Christ, and it's Christ's words that will speak, and it's, it's the Holy Spirit that pricks the heart, and then we, we're left to have to respond, and that's what God will know. He knows the hearts. He knows the offense. He knows the obedience and the blessing follows. Some here today know that Jesus is not Lord of your life. You have been in charge, doesn't matter how much you came to church. You've been in charge. He is not Lord. Yet the Holy Spirit has convicted you today to make him Lord. And the question is, will you say yes? Will you yield? Or be offended that somebody else would be in charge of what you do. Some of you know that he was, but you've been living like your Lord lately. And it's time to reestablish. It's time to let him have his place again. It's time. You know, he says, I'm I'm faithful and just to cleanse everybody who comes and confesses to me. He's a faithful God. He will do his word. The question is, will you respond to what he says? I can lead you in a prayer if you commend your heart, your life to him as Lord, maybe for the first time or even simply yielding back, whichever it is. Uh, Your brothers and sisters that understand, they'll be happy for you. They'll say the prayer with you. But we've got to be bold in front of men and women and confess Christ. There's something about that to be able to be identified as now a believer, as someone who's yielding their life and not afraid to let people see it. So if that's you today, brother, sister, God's brought you to that, then be bold. Raise that hand, and we will say this prayer with you. Come in your heart, your life, everything to the living God. Anybody in the room need that prayer? Raise your hand up high, and we'll say this prayer with you. Anybody in the room that needs that, raise your hand up high, and we'll say this prayer with you. All right, praise God. I don't see any hands. I'm going to trust that we're all believers. We're all yielded like we should be. If not... You're too afraid to raise your hand? Well, brother, sister, get it right before you put your head on the pillow tonight. Don't let this opportunity escape you. Don't be offended at the word of God. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you for this word. Help us, Lord, to yield to what you say. Help us to be obedient to that. May you be our God. I know you've spoken to hearts here today. Lord, cause us to be excited about what you have done and and who you are in our life and not not yield to the things of this world that that are promoting darkness and deception to our families lord may you live bright in us may you may the world see us here in sussex county and and delmarva and all throughout this area may you be glorified in our lives do your work in powers by the holy spirit to live as you would have us live, and we will give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, make sure you read those announcements. Hug a neck, and you're dismissed. <laughs>